Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and video show which brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. I'm your host, Fritz Bussemaker, and today I'm delighted and privileged to have a conversation with Richard Barrett. Richard, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Fritz. Happy to be with you. Yes. Now, allow me to introduce Richard. Uh, he's a British author of over 13 books who writes and teaches about leadership as well as cultural evolution in business and society. He now lives in the UK, was responsible for developing the theory of the seven stages of psychological development and the universal stages of evolution. He's an international recognized thought leader on the evolution of human values in business and society. He's the president of the Barrett Academy, Barrett Academy, which he founded two years ago, and the founder of the Barrett Value Center, which he founded in 1997. And before starting his own company, he was the values coordinator at the World Bank. So, Richard, again, welcome. Uh, Thank you. Value seems to be the main theme throughout your whole life. Uh, maybe sure. can you expand a little bit your background Um what are the key milestones which brought you here today? Well, I'll try and keep it short, Fritz. Um, yeah. Basically, I, uh, for the first 20-odd uh, years of my life, uh, well, of my professional career, I was a transportation engineer, very successful, mm -hmm. finished up working at the World Bank, advising governments all over the world how to build urban transport systems. And then suddenly, when I was 45 years old, became absolutely bored with my career. Up to that point, I'd really enjoyed it. And I thought, well, what is happening here? And then I realized I was getting a message from my soul, which was saying, time to shift from transportation to transformation engineering because the thing that had been interesting me all my life was uh, were topics of psychology spirituality um, everything to do with what makes the mind work and function and particularly the link between the ego and the soul and okay. so um, in 1997 I left the World Bank and started doing what I'm doing now great but when you said uh, I got bored. Was that because of an, an, an external observation, something which you noticed, or was that something internally? You just you woke up and said, "Hey, I'm, I'm feeling something." I'm totally I'm internal. Totally, I I I got to the age of forty five, which is roughly the stage of development where we begin to feel the impulse of our soul and we want to find meaning and purpose in our lives. And that's what I felt. I felt that impulse, and it, it was a totally totally internal and many people many many people have that same uh experience in their 40s where they they decided on a career in their 20s and then get to a point in their life and say well that, that doesn't interest me anymore what i'm really want is this this is my passion this is my purpose this is what i want to spend my life doing and that was my experience Okay, um, so if the experience with a lot of people, we're going to dive in immediately. If, if the experience with people is, okay, uh, around their 40s, hey, uh, I, I might have been doing something which I'm not enjoying. I'm going to reassess what, I, my, my, what I'm doing. Uh, why can't they make that decision earlier in life? Well, they can. Okay. Well, they can. Some people feel the, sim in the soul impulse earlier. Some people f never feel it. But um, there are people, even, even in their 30s, who get to uh, understand what is that deep meaning and purpose they have for that. Some people are born like that, like uh, concert uh, pianists or artists, or etc. But for most people, for most people, it happens uh, in their late 30s and during their 40s. I'm not saying everybody, but just for most people. Okay. Uh, is there any relationship with becoming a parent, like most people do around that age? No. No. no these are these are seven stages of psychological development. Where I developed that model over twenty five years ago. We all go through these stages of development. They're very much linked to age and life circumstances, and um, the uh, the. Uh, this is the stage of self-actualization in the 40s, which Maslow spoke about. 
uh, Maslow talked a lot about self-actualization. And um, the previous stage, uh, usually in the mid 20s to late 30s is called individuation, which Carl Jung talked about. Yeah. So these are stages of psychological development, which are well, well written about, well understood. And all I've done is I've built them into a model which allows you to see the seven stages that you go through in your life. You finish it up at the seventh stage, which is service, usually in your 60s. And the focus then in your 60s on, is on giving back. It's really about how can I contribute to the well-being of humanity and the planet. And that's how where you find your meaning and purpose in your later years. Okay. Well, uh, could you maybe sh slowly repeat what those seven stages are and more or less sure. in your life you get across that? Yeah. Yeah. So the first three stages are basically dependent on biological development and the growth of the brain and the mind. So the first stage is surviving, which starts in the womb and con continues to about the age of two, when the where the uh, reptilian mind brain is dominant. That's the brain that all animals have, which is about f how to keep the body functioning. And around the age of two, we move into the from the surviving stage into the conforming stage where the, the limbic mind brain, which focuses on relationships, becomes dominant and stays dominant until the age of about eight. And this is all about where well, the first stage is about surviving. Now we're concerned with safety and being loved and being uh, belonging. The third stage, which coincides with the, the uh, um, rational mind becoming dominant, the, the mind that we grow, know of as when we, we get older, it becomes dominant around um, the age of nine or 10. And, and the mind and the brain could keep on growing and developing until range, the age of about 22. So that's the third stage. I call that the differentiating stage. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a fully functioning brain or mind until we are in our early 20s. And that's why teenagers do really stupid things because they, they haven't really managed to figure out the rationality of what they're doing and the implications of what they're doing. So we get to the age of uh, about 21 and 22, and we've been through the first three stages of development. And what we're doing is we're conforming. We are, we are living within our society and we're trying to find our way in society. Um, and uh, so we've actually been totally enculturated, totally enculturated by the society you live in. You were brought up in, in the Netherlands. I was brought up in England. Somebody was brought up in France. So we're totally enculturated by that society. Now, come stage, which Carl Jung talked about, the individuating stage, the fourth stage, which is where we find freedom, freedom to be who we really are without all this, must do that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the individuating stage. The individuating stage occurs in the tw late 20s and 30s, which is, who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? And that begins to have some sort of meaning. And, and so we let go of our conditioning in our late 20s and 30s, and we find out who we are. Now, most people on the planet never get there. Uh, it's a very small proportion of people who never get past the enculturation. And so we now we individuated and now now we're on to the growth period where we're beginning to say, well, okay, so the, who am I? Am I here? By the way, if you ever want to, uh, to hear a song, a pop song about that particular period, um, you can go to the logical song by, um, oh, who, who were they? Uh, Super Tramp. Super, Super Tramp. Tramp. Yes. Listen to the logical Super Tramp. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful illustration of that stage of development. And it's all about who am I? I had this beautiful childhood experience and then they sent me away yeah. to get educated and everything. And I came back and I'm like, who am I? Anyhow, then we move from that individuating stage uh, in uh, goes on till about late twenties. And then we've into the self ex actualization stage, which I already spoke about in the forties, where we begin to look for deeper meaning and purpose. What's in my heart? What do I want to do with my life? And then when we find that, we move to the integrating stage where we want to make a difference in the world by using our gifts and talents to help people. And to do that, we have to be able to connect. So, so in self-actualizing, we find meaning and purpose. Um, in integrating, we learn how to connect and make a difference. And then finally, we get to our 60s and like, oh, my God, 
I just want to be, I'm having so much fun doing all of this. I just want to be of service to the world. Yeah. That sounds like you, Fritz. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment, by the way. That's actually how I feel. So, um, exactly. Yeah. Yes, but, um, I, I figured that out. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting there. Um, now, this all seems like quite a rational approach, a model to how to approach something, which also is sometimes quite fuzzy. Um, yeah. By the way, uh, does your civil engineering background, I mean, being in civil engineering for over 20 years, I like the way that you discuss from transportation to transformation, but does that mean you put things in order? Is that something you force yourself to do? Exactly. So this is what people say about my books and yep. um, and my, my writings, is that they bring clarity to a very... Uh, as you said, it fuzzy topic. You bring total clarity, and now I get it. I understand. Yeah. I understand um, these stages and how they relate to my life. And it's like, a, you know, we weren't given an owner's manual when we were born, you yeah. know, an operating manual. Well, my writings give you kind of an operating manual for life. And that's what people tell me. It's like, oh, gosh, this is the stage I'm at. This is what's in each stage has its own needs, for example. Um, so, so as I said, at the 40s, you really have a very strong need to find meaning and purpose. Um, at the differentiating stage, the teenage stage, what you're, you're looking for is recognition and acknowledgement. That's what you need. That's, each stage has its own set of needs. And so uh, uh, you, as you go through life, you know, not only do your needs change, but your values change because um, yeah. you, other things become important. Whatever you need, value your values are a reflection of your needs i wrote a whole book about everything i learned about value, which was that whole idea of personal values organizational values and societal values okay uh bash me to ask the following question so what and let me emphasize um so, so what so yes, yes so what question so now people are able to because of your structure able to recognize where they are in their life, they can understand it. So what, how is that going to help them eventually? Well, uh, Fritz, do you want to find, do you want to be happy and find well-being in your life? Yes. That's the same with everybody. And yeah. this is what, that's what this does. It, okay. it enables you to see, I've written a whole book called Evolutionary Coaching, which says, okay, what stage of development am I at? So what are my needs? And what is blocking? What is blocking me from satisfying those needs? What is blocking me from finding needs? From the first three stages of development, from your childhood and teenage years, they, they're still stuck in your mind. Like an example of somebody, an example of someone who uh, we all know who is completely stuck, and that's Donald Trump. He had never got past. He never got back to the individuating stage. He's still trying to satisfy the unmet needs of his child. He's still trying to find, if he, I, I analyzed some of his books and he's focused on revenge. He's, I mean, he's focused on self-esteem. He was never recognized. He never felt safe. And so he's stuck in, and so many of our leaders are, when you look around the world, there are very, very few leaders who are actually evolved i mean if you want to yeah. if you want to find evolved leaders go to go to finland where all of the leadership team are young women if you go to new zealand where the prime minister is a woman if you go to iceland where the leadership team is women mostly young women i mean the women don't somehow don't be so uh, are not so affected if you look at the top I have a way of measuring the well-being of nations. And if you look at the top eight nations, uh, six of them are actually managed by women. And if you look at the next nine, only one of them is managed by a woman, and that's Angela Merkel. All the rest are managed by men. And, and men just don't have what I call the evolutionary intelligence in order to understand that it's not about power and self-esteem. It's about connecting. It's about contributing. And men get stuck in this power thing about, look at me, look how great I, I want to be the best in the world than the best for the world. 
and men get stuck in that. Not all men. I'm not saying all men, but it's uh, that's one of the main difference between men and women. Yeah, although women have do, evolutionary yeah. intelligence. No, I do uh, recognize what you're describing, but somehow uh, we still end up with leaders like uh, you just described, which are right. selected by people who see them uh, still, still as role models, otherwise they're not going to be elected in that role. So yeah, that's that's because that's because the people haven't evolved. The people yeah. are at a lower level of consciousness. They involve they elect leaders that resonate with their level of consciousness. So so if you want to know why America elects Donald Trump, well, it's because the people in America are only at the third stage of development. And they elect a leader who resonates that. If you go to New Zealand, why did they elect um, uh, the lady there? Well, because they're more evolved. They've reached the individuating stage. If you go to Sweden and Norway and Finland, they're at higher people or average, higher average stage of development. I measure all of this in my global well-being indicator. And so um, you elect, the, the government you get re reflects the level of consciousness of the nation, basically. Okay. As that. people evolve. If people, as people evolve, as the, as the, as a critical mass evolves, then they will elect different people, and and if you look back over history over the last two hundred years, that's exactly what you see. You see an evolution of consciousness that has taken place. Okay, you just mentioned uh, what you measure. I'm just uh, interested. Could you uh, uh, ex uh, explain, share with us what exactly you measure per country, uh, so you can uh, yep. assess who they are. Where they stand? Yeah, well, I, actually, uh, I think this website is going live today or tomorrow. It's very interesting. Yeah. You mentioned that it's called the Global Wellbeing Indicators, uh, and um, it's Global Wellbeing Indicators, all one word. dot org. It's going live today or tomorrow, or maybe the next day. Um, and uh, what I found was uh, that I found 17 global indicators which are produced by other people that align with these seven stages of development. So there are at least two or three or four of these indicators aligning with these seven stages of development. For example, at level four, I've got four indicators, which is gender equality, uh, um, freedom of the press. Um, uh, I can't remember the other two right now, but so... These are produced by people every year. So for the last five years, I've taken the data of these 17 indicators, allocated them to these seven levels, and I've calculated a global well-being indicator for 145 nations all over the planet. And so I can, I can tell you what's going on in a particular nation at a very detailed level, which indicators which levels of consciousness are going up, which ones are going down, and I produce a world report on, on global well-being, and it's right at the front of this new website. You go there and you'll find the world report for 2020 on global well-being, which indicate of these 17 indicators are improving and which are not. And you can also go on and find out what's happening in your country over the past five years. What are the issues in your country? Uh, what's, what's getting better? What's getting worse? And uh, the big issue when I looked at the world report is, is it's just an outstanding issue. I mean, oh my God, it is off the charts going downwards. Um, maybe because of the sound, could you repeat that last remark? Which country is going down off the charts? Yeah. So, so if you look at the world, yeah. If you look at the world, what's going down off the charts is environmental protection. It okay. is. It's so obvious. It sticks out like a sore thumb. And there are some countries like South Korea, that have actually improved on environmental, but most of them have not. And so um, it's like a big alarm bell ringing. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the, you know, my 2020 World Wellbeing Report points out that, yeah. Now, if you go to a particular country, I can tell you exactly what the issues are in a particular country, uh, uh, what's been going up, what's been going down. Uh, like in Canada, for example, you know, it's quite evolved in Canada. Um, However, they still have an issue in Canada around gender equality. Um, if you go to the USA, they still have issues around personal safety because, um, well, we all know the gun laws in America are ridiculous. Um, so, uh, so USA ranks about 112 in terms of personal safety. I mean, it's a area you've got a democratic country 
ranking 112 out of 145 in personal safety. I mean, that's it's frustrating and stupid. Now, uh, got me thinking, the, the minute you uh, produce a global well-being index or map of where we all are, yeah. um, to what extent, the, I mean, you, then you have to define what well-being is. Uh, yep. Is that a universally accepted definition? So we have the same definition of well-being in Europe, in the States, or in India or China. No, we don't. So uh, I have, uh, because of this chaos in the definition of well-being, I decided to invent my own. And, and for me, well-being is the feeling you get when you're able to meet the needs of the stage of psychological development that you're at. Okay, so if you if you are not meeting the needs of your stage of psychological, development, you're not going to feel a sense of well-being. Now, okay, now so people at lower levels of consciousness can feel a sense of well-being because they're getting the needs met at that stage of development. So, so I've had to actually create an absolute scale, uh, if you like, for the whole which belongs to the seven stages, so that we can there's a way of looking at. Um, uh, there's a way of looking at well-being from an objective point of view rather than from um, a subjective point of view. And uh, so when so many of the many of the well-being indicators that are out there, look at it from a subjective point of view. It's like, you know, it's like they ask you, you know, what has happening to you yesterday, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I've done is I've developed an absolute scale of well-being, which fits the seven stages of psychological development. And we can measure countries against those stages. Um, and uh, so that's, uh, that's the big contribution that I think I made. So well-being is the feeling you get when you're able to meet the needs of the stage of psychological development you're at. And if you can't meet those needs, you're not going to feel happy. Okay, You're now gonna uh, feel I'm going to ask you a question, then loop around again to this discussion, because you based your model on Maslow's uh, hierarchical needs. However, his model was also yep. criticized in the sense that um, he studied people he admired, uh, and people are less predictable than the hierarchy suggests. Sure. So sure. Um, that but, is but, public knowledge it, as far as Maslow is concerned. To what extent, when you, you look wait at... A minute. Sorry, go ahead. There is a lot of uh, there's a lot of evidence. Maslow is coming back into fashion, right, okay. right, left, and center. Uh, I don't know whether you've seen all the latest discussion about Maslow, but what I did was I extended Maslow's model and I shifted it from needs to values. So, um, yeah, uh, we've we've mapped we've used this model to map. What I do is I give more focus to self actualization, what you call growth needs, and. Uh, We've actually mapped the values of thousands of organizations all over the world using this model and thousands of leaders too. And people love it because it actually, whatever you can measure, you can manage. And so when you can, when you can say, look, what are my values? And you, you see what they are. And then you see what levels of consciousness you're operating from. You go, oh my God, this is where I'm operating from. I don't want to be operating from there. I want to be operating from here. And that's exactly what happens the basis of cultural transformation, not only in organizations, but also in nations. We map the values. We've done over 50 national values assessments all over the world using this model. So, yeah, there, there was a time when Maslow went out of favor, but I tell you, uh, all of the evidence I see now and research papers, a lot of it, anyhow, not all of it, okay. um, is like, yeah, he was onto something. I agree, he was onto something. Okay, so you're not concerned or afraid that people will not only attack or organ uh, countries will not only uh, uh, criticize their place in your um, um, index, uh, but the, uh, you're not concerned if they um, criticize uh, the, the fundamentals of your model because you're... No. Yeah. I'm not Good. concerned at all because there are so many people who like... I, I get emails every day from people saying, my God, this is fantastic. I now understand my life. I understand this. I understand where my organization is. I mean, I, I don't hardly get any. I, I, I haven't had a critical email uh, in three years, I don't think. Okay. Um, you know, it's like, uh, no.
Well, I have to believe, for it's in what you do, and you have to believe. And and it's, you know, a lot of my work is based on evidence. We've we've used the model and the tools to measure and map the values of leaders and organizations all over the world in forty or fifty different languages. And it's you know, we, providing they follow the results of these values assessments, then they see amazing change in the profitability in income and in employee engagement uh, i mean we're contacted by major corporations all over the world who want to use these tools okay. so no i don't worry about that i have no fear fritz what's Great. the point of having fear i don't i don't i don't subscribe to fear uh, fear just blocks me and i i don't want it in my life okay you've Okay, you, you've mentioned just uh, the, the the phases on an individual level. Um, you, okay, you've, you've mapped countries around the world. You've already discussed a little bit on organizations. Uh, in the last part of the if you want to explore that uh, a little bit. Um, okay. What makes a good leader of an organization today? Well, you see, I... I... I talk about leaders uh, are being able to operate from all seven levels of consciousness. So I a good leader is one who operates from full spectrum consciousness. So they can handle any situation. So a survival situation at level one, I can un handle relationship issues at level two, yeah. can I can handle performance relation issues at level three, can uh, handle issues around employee engagement and employee um, uh, uh, innovation at level four can handle creativity and um, shared vision and shared values at level six can handle employee engagement linked to the environment at level six and then at level seven can recognize how the organization supports the UN sustainable development goals so you see what we're looking for is fully self-actualized individuals who can actually who can operate at all of these different levels of consciousness without fear yeah. and that's what a, makes a good leader yeah. requires i think a, quite a lot of agility as well being able to continue yeah, that's, change yeah, that's level. level four that's level four agility comes in at level four ability to uh, you, you see um, uh, Keegan who, from Harvard had these uh, different stages. You know, he talked about the socialized mind, which is the first three levels, the self-authoring mind, which is like the fourth level of consciousness, and then the, uh, the fourth and fifth, and then the uh, self-transforming mind. Now, the self-transforming mind is able to see the world in its full reality, not just through the lenses of its own belief system. Mm -hmm. That's what we need and we need a shift we need the leaders to make a shift from being the best in the world to the best for the world we, we need a shift in leaders to recognize that the business is a wholly owned subsidiary of society and if you want proof of that look at COVID. i mean society crashed and business crashed um and and society is a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment that's going to be the next thing so so there's a new message for business, and that is if you're not looking after society, if you're not looking after the environment as a businessman, you are missing the point because you're going to you're not supporting humanity. And that is the big message I have in my humanity awareness initiative, which we haven't even mentioned, which is how to re-educate the world to create a new worldview, a new worldview that is transnational, because we can't solve the problems we have from the, each nation. We have to cooperate. We have to move to a higher level of consciousness. And that's what the Humanity Awareness Initiative is about. It's about teaching organizations and leaders to operate from a new worldview. And that worldview is transnational, it's global, and it concerns the whole of humanity. That's what it's called the Humanity Awareness Initiative. Uh, Richard, uh, these are great remarks uh, and observations to end this great, really great discussion on. 
uh, do have one last question. What is your advice to those young managers sure. and next generation out there? How, how are, what should they be doing right now? The most important thing a young person can do, and I take up the point young, because now we're talking about individuation, is learning to lead yourself. You see, if you can't lead yourself, there's no way you're going to lead a team. If you can't lead a team, there's pointless trying to lead an organization. Now, leading yourself is all about personal mastery. It's all about understanding what stage of development you are, what your unneed, unmet needs are, and how to overcome those unmet needs through um, personal mastery. And that, for me, is the key for young leaders. If you, are, if you can't lead yourself, you may as well throw the towel in because you're, you're a... You know, you're not contributing to the future of humanity. Richard, very wise words. I very much enjoy talking to you. Uh, very much looking forward to also read up on uh, the indexing results. I, do, I really want to know yeah. where uh, uh, the various countries around the world stand. So, uh, again, it was a pleasure talking to you and so much for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you. So just, just to say one last thing, Fritz, you know, I'm instructing my webmaster to put that website live today just for you, Fritz. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.